So I'm not going to answer this right now. What would be really neat is for you to take it some time and try to figure out what the difference is. See if you can let me know and then post it for the community to try to find out what makes the pen brush a pen brush. I'm just going to get in there and start to use it. And like I said, I prefer um, pen A. But I got to reset these brushes because that's not the way it's supposed to be. There we go. That's the alpha. Okay. So with symmetry on, this is really cool for kind of discovering new things. Uh, you'll see a lot of, there's a couple of tutorials out there. Uh, let's see, Yelmer has done some work. Neville Page has done some work. Uh, and the key behind this, because Pixelogic spent like, I think they spent almost three weeks or something like that on this one feature, because it fits the bill for what Pixelogic wants, for what the guys are looking for, which is how do you find a way to create these happy accidents so that people just stop putting standardized designs in, like I just put an eye and nose and a mouth. Let's see, is there a happy accident where I can figure out something else, some other way to pull this together and make some crazier design? Is there some way that this computer can augment my creativity and make me a better uh, artist? You know, that's what they're going to be looking for. And uh, so that's why they spent about like three weeks just playing around. You can see it's pretty cool. You know, you get some results pretty fast. But let me load back uh, the, the mech character, because that's really what we want to be talking about. In fact, um, let me just load it back through Lightbox. Okay. Let's see, will that work? Yeah, good. Okay, um, now I've got my polyplane selected. We haven't really talked about layers in any major sense, but I have been using layers. So what I did was sketch out a character, a male figure, eight heads, basic proportion, some kind of base that I can start to work on. And then I created material from there. So I created drawings in layers. I would press this guy right here. And inside this layer, I would use pen A, and I'd start to sketch out something. Now, let me load this again. So I get the canvas size a little bit more the way I want it. OK. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm in the layer palette. I'm creating new here. That's going to create a new one there, and it's going to be in record mode. Notice it says record. Anything I do here is going to be treated as a separate piece. It's not going to affect the drawing underneath. So let's put the body in here with some grills for him to see through. And if you've seen Stan Winston's Comic-Con thing, then you'll, you'll get a sense of where this one's kind of going. We, I might be uh, putting something together for them, so I'm just practicing now. But the key thing is really how this operates with this kind of shadow. You can barely see it, but you see how there's one line, one line, one line. The original idea behind this pen brush is that you make one stroke and then it'll automatically put a little bit of a shadow on one side. And then it'll put on some other things. It'll get a little messy, right? This is a little messy, little wisps of stuff. This is very, very important, psychologically speaking. Um, if you're sketching, a lot of times, you know, you sit here and you try to find the design, you try to find it, and then there's this process where it, everything just gets darker in one area because you're kind of self-selecting a certain tangent. 
And so the dev team was started to really analyze what is a sketch. What do you do when you sketch? And I know we're talking about artists and we're working in um, in ZBrush, but you know they spend a long time. I mean, a lot of my conversations with the um, with those guys, the the idea of what a, uh, uh, somebody's doing when they sketch, the idea of analyzing that's been around for a long time for them. And these little wisps that you see, and this softness, that's the result of somebody really analyzing that in a you know a real comprehensive way. It's not just accidental. These little wisps are one thousand percent part of the experience of Quick Sketch, uh, and the advantage, you know, there's a lot of programs that do this. I'm not saying that this is just beyond the best tool. Uh, I'm just saying that this is this is their thinking process. Uh, and then the other thing is is that it works in these chunks, so it starts to lay down construction lines all by itself. Again, part of the plan. 100%. And it works because you can kind of get in and start to create some really interesting results. So for my guy, I'm going to choose to go with this. Um, his knee is going to be here. His foot is going to be there. And we're going to extend out the foot dinosaur style and see what we can pull up there. All right, now if I click outside of the record button, I get an eye icon. I can turn that off. And then I can see all the other things that I was messing around with. You can leave them so that they're intersecting each other. Create another layer. And then in this layer, you would get in and start to pick the things that really work for you. And I'm not going to get too far there, but you know, you can see this is there's something really cool with all of these guys layered on. I didn't know what was going to happen with them, but I think we'll be able to pull out something out of all of that uh, craziness. So let's let's get into actually creating parts and pieces. So we're going to make a transition now um, and start talking about parts and pieces. But before I do that, actually, let me look at Ryan's question. Sometimes my material automatically changes when I use 100% black. It's been happening for the last. The material changes from flat to red wax. Sometimes it doesn't. Hmm. Ryan, I was hoping I would have a uh, an answer for the question, and I do not have an answer. Sometime, I'm going to give it two seconds, and then I'll move on. Sometimes my material automatically changes when I use 100% black. Okay. All right. Uh, I can mention two things. One, 100% of anything in ZBrush does tend to have different results. That's just a total amateur hour. Um, uh, that's my Ayurvedic approach to uh, to diagnosing the ZBrush technical problem, which means I'm just coming up with something that might might not be the reason. 100% black might be might be some oddness in the code there. Uh, if things are changing material, it might be that you're using layers. Layers gets problematic. Um, but I haven't seen anything like that happen per se to me that I know of. 